Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Good to see everybody here. Good evening to everyone. Let's put our hands together and give God a hand of praise. Amen. Are you glad to be here tonight? I hate to be redundant. But millions didn't make it. But we're one of the ones that did. Isn't that a blessing? I mean, really. There's a lot of things we take for granted that people are now praying and wishing they, ha they have. That's why the scripture clearly tells us in everything, give thanks. Everything. What we may call small is big to others. Water. Soap. Food, air condition. Cars. And being able to take care of all that stuff. That's a blessing in itself. Amen. So glad to see each and every one of you here tonight. We thank God for you that are in-house. Also, those of you that are joining us via Facebook and YouTube, we thank and praise God for you joining us and for him giving us another opportunity. Hello? My volume went. Him giving us another opportunity <laughs> to be in his house to teach his word. Uh, <clears throat> for another after COVID facts Bible study. Amen. I'm praying that this will enrich, enhance, and elevate our lives after we hear this. All right. So let's pray and then we're going to get right into the lesson. And I would say go get some chicken, but some of you are already eaten. So let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we come how we just thank you, praise you, and we just bless you for one more opportunity to teach your word, to hear what you have to say to us, dear God. And I'm praying for those that are here in the sanctuary and even those that are on Facebook and YouTube to be blessed by this word on tonight that you have deposited in us, dear God. And I pray that you will let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray to God that you would open the hearts, the minds and ears of your people to receive your word that we can better serve you and be a light in this dark and dim world. Hide me behind the cross, dear God, so much so that people will see or hear none of me but all of thee. Let your word go forth on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Tonight's lesson would come from 1 John chapter number 4, commence reading with verse number 7 and conclude with verse number 12. I'm going to read King James and I'm going to read the Message Bible. I love its interpretation. King James and then the Message Bible. When you have it, these words are recorded. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. Sent his son to be the prop propitiation for our sins. Beloved if God so loved us, we also ought, we ought also to love one another. Twelfth and final verse, no man hath seen God at any time. 
If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Amen? Now let me read from the Message Bible, which reads like this. My beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences a relationship with God. A person who refuses to love God doesn't know the first thing about God because God is love. So you can't know him if you don't love. This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son to the world so we might believe, might live through him. This is the kind of love we are talking about. Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. My dear, my dear friends, if God loved us like this, we certainly ought to love each other. Twelfth and final verse, no one has seen God ever. But if we love one another, God dwells deeply within us and his love becomes a complete, become complete in us, perfect love. Amen. Thank God for the passage of God to the people of God from the power of God. For it is the power of God that reveals the passages of God to the people of God. Amen. If we're going to be able to get the facts straight after COVID, we must know tonight what the facts are about God's love. That's what we're going to talk about. What the facts are about God's love. All right. I hope this bless you. There is nothing like the love of God. Nothing. It is the most overwhelming thing that you and I have ever encountered. It is the greatest thing God ever did for any of us. And the reason I can say that is this. Because he loved us, he was moved to do everything else that he has done. Let me say that slow. Because he loved us, he was moved to do everything else that he has done. John's epistle has a fourfold purpose that our joy might be full. Verse, chapter 1, verse 4. That we might not sin, chapter 2, verse 1. That we ourselves might love others, chapter 4, verse 11. And that we might know that we have eternal life, chapter 5, verse 13. First John is the great book of love. It is mentioned, watch this. 46 times in 135 verses. If that's not talking about love, I'd like to know what is. It was written to combat a heresy known as Gnosticism. The Gnostic believed that knowledge was power. They felt that they had a special Knowledge of God and his ways. And John is writing to put them in their place. And he does. And as he does it, he tells the rest of us about a great God with a great love for great sinners. It's the great love of the great God that I want to talk about tonight. Just for a few moments. And then I really pray tonight that the Lord speaks to your heart because if we're going to be able to 
get the facts straight during and after COVID. We need to know the facts about God's love. Now, I've been teaching this for quite some time, and I want to know, do you know what the facts are? On Bible study, I said periodically, but we had a, one lesson that was about it completely. Facts, F-A-C-T-S. Y'all know what that is? Faithful to God, that's the first one. Okay? That's F. That's a fact. We need to be faithful to God. Available for God, that's A. C, consistent in the ministry of God. That's F-A-C. T, teachable. Lord have mercy. From the word of God. And then S, submissive to the will of God. Those are the facts. I'm going to go over again. I see some of y'all writing and I'm... I'm I know you don't know shorthand. So, faithful to God. F, faithful to God. A, available for God. C, consistent in the ministry of God. T, teachable from the word of God. And S, submissive to the will of God. Those are the facts. F-A-C-T-S. And the first fact we have in this text tonight that we need to know about God's love is this. His love, and when I looked at this, I say it jumped out, just leaped off the pages. His love is described in the context. Look at verse 7 through 9. 7 through 9. His love is described in the context. He says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Here it is. In this. That's the context. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. The context is in this. What is it in this for? That prior to verse 9. Are you with me? His love is unspeakable. We can't understand it. Or why? But I do know and have experienced God's love and nothing can never separate me from it. Okay? His love is unspeakable. Romans 8 and 38, 39, very familiar passage of scripture that we all should be familiar with. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Unspeakable. His love is unspeakable. His love is unending. Unending. Jeremiah 31 and 3. The Lord hath appeared of an old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee, here it is, with an everlasting love. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. God's love is eternal. His love is unspeakable. His love is unending. His love is unselfish. It asks for nothing in return. However, it leads man to repent and to turn to God in love. 
Romans 2 and 4. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Or despise it thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. And then right there in 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. His love is unspeakable. His love is unending. His love is unselfish. His love is unmerited. I got, I, I, the more I read, the more I studied, the happier I got. His love cannot be earned or deserved. There's nothing you can do. That's what grace is. God's unmerited favor. His love is based in his grace. And we ought to thank God for his grace. Lord have mercy. All right, his love is unspeakable. His love is unending. His love is unselfish. His love is unmerited. His love is unconditional. It's all in this, it's all in described in the context. Are you with me? His love is, it is not based on what we can. And I, I think we, really, we need to get this in our heads. Too many folk think that they're going to work out they got to work it out in order to get heaven. No. It's not based on his love for us. It's not based on what we can or cannot produce. It comes from the heart of God. Man can never reach a place when, we, when he will not be loved by God. Now some of us will get to a place where we won't love folks the way God tell us to. Say amen if you can. But there's nothing that will keep God from loving us. And that's something to shout about right there. God loved us first. He loved us anyway. And he loves us eternally. His love is supernatural. Sacrificing and satisfying. Yes, Lord. And we as Christians, which means Christ like, we should exemplify the same kind of love that Christ has. Oh, I know you say, Pastor, the Spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. I'm going to tell you like I told my children today. I talked to every last one of them. I didn't say perfect. I say, but we ought to know that we have a relationship with the Lord. None of us are perfect. Because the scripture tells us all have. Come on, help me. Okay. But we ought to know. That if we were to die tonight, where we would spend eternity. Amen. I didn't say perfect. You cannot, you cannot be leery in knowing if you can drive a car or not. If so, let me know so I will not be on the street with you. You got to know. Am I right? You ought to know if you're saved or not. Amen. You ought to know if something was to happen to you tonight, where you would spend eternity. Has nothing to do with perfection. That'll tell us, the scripture will tell us to talk about that in just a minute. Okay? His love is described in the context. What's the context? His love is unspeakable, unending, unselfish, unmerited, unconditional. His love is supernatural, it is sacrificing, and it is satisfying. So if we're gonna act straight after COVID, during and after COVID. We, know, we need to know the facts about God's love. I'm already going to point two. And the first fact that we learn, listen tonight, that God, his love is described in what? In the context. Secondly, 
His love was demonstrated at Calvary. Look at verse 10. Verse number 10. Herein, glory to God, his love is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Brothers and sisters, God's love can never be fully understood. But watch this. It can definitely be seen in the Christians. And where else can it be seen? At the cross. He stood in the gap. You got to remember, you got to remember, glory to God, thank you God for giving. You got to remember that when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he was ready to wave the white flag. Do I have a witness here? Because he said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Then he looked in 2021 and said, them folks over in Round Rock going to need you. So he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He stood in the, we should have been on the cross. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of of God in him. He took our place. Save folk ought to be shouting. He saved us from hell. It is the death of the cross. The death that released his precious blood. That opened the door of salvation for every sinner. Remember I said this about two Sundays ago. What all the folks had to try to do to get to the holies of the holies. And Jesus came and said, no, I'm going to break down all those barriers. You don't have to go through anybody anymore. You can go for yourself. Thank God. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19 said, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Here it is. But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 says, In him we have Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Mm, mm, mm. He took our place. His love was demonstrated at Calvary. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. Somebody ought to thank God. Somebody ought to shout thank God. For the blood of Jesus. I'm going to my third point. If we're going to be able to get the facts straight after COVID, during and after COVID, we need to know some facts about God's love. You tell me what's the first fact. Okay, I'll tell you. His love is described in the context. Secondly, his Demonstrated at Calvary. Amen. 
And then finally, the fact that we need to know about God's love is his love is displayed. Here's the key in the Christian. In the Christian. Verses 11 and 12, and I'm out. We're going to pray. We're going to pray tonight a little bit because kids are getting ready to start school. We need to pray. We need to pray. Pray hard. Verse 11 and 12 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. <laughs> I can stay right there and, and keep you here to eight. Verse 12, no man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. God's love is displayed in the Christian and it will be visible if it is possessed. Scripture clearly tells us, how can you say you love me whom you've never seen and hate your brother whom you see every day? I, I have a serious issue with folk to say they're a Christian and go way on the other side of the church to quit speaking to somebody. Well, you know, I just can't do her. I just can't do him. Well, think about what Christ said about us before we got saved. I just can't do her. I just can't do him. I knew it would get quiet right there, so. Hmm. God's love is displayed in the Christian. And it will be visible if it is possessed. Now, we got to notice throughout this Bible... There have been many men who demonstrated God's love. Let me give you a few examples. Joseph, he demonstrated forgiving love. Those that are familiar with the story of Joseph know he was lied about, sold as a slave, ripped from his home and father, falsely accused, Put in prison, he waited and waited and waited, all because of his jealous brothers. But here it is, yet he still forgave. He had the power when they came to him for food. He had the power to not even to feed them or get them killed. He for, they didn't even recognize him, he knew them. But they didn't recognize him because Joseph had changed. He, he looked good. He was already a good looking boy. But he, he, he was, went from the pit to the palace. And he forgave. What's your hang up? Why can't you forgive? Do I need to say that slow? So I can say it some more? Forgiving love, Okay. That's part of God's love. Redeeming love. <laughs> this is a good one here. Which is a part of God's love. Hosea. That's right. God instructed him to marry a prostitute. Yet he had redeeming love. Wife was named Goma. Okay? God's love, another form of God's love, compassion, compassionate love. Now, I know we're going to be familiar with this one. Peter denied him. I don't know who he is. You know, he warmed by the enemy's fire. And they said, you know, you look like, you look like one of them fellows that was Jesus. Jesus said, no. Peter said, no, I wasn't with him. Mm -mm, I wasn't with him. I wasn't with him. He kept sitting there warming by the enemy's fire. He said, yeah, you. Yeah, you, uh, you, you. He said, woman, didn't I tell you I wasn't with him? I'm just paraphrasing. And then the last time she said, yeah, you was with him. Bible said he cussed. Now he said cursed, but you know, 
we cuss. <laughs> and denied him three times. But look at the compassion that Christ had. Jesus still said, Peter, when he said, whom the men say that I am, and they say, well, some say Elijah, some say one of the prophets, you know, blah, blah, blah. He said, well, Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Peter, not based upon you, but upon what you said. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. That's compassionate love. Somebody that denied you. Okay. Healing love. Another form of God's love is healing love. And this is personal because it talks about us. Us being angry, bitter, jealous, burning with lust. Yet Jesus still reached down and picked us up out of the muck and mind. He saved our soul from a burning hell. Psalm 103 verses 1 through 4 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. All his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy from life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Now, when, when we love God and we have the love of God present in our life, brothers and sisters, and I'm getting across the field, it would be visible right here in five different areas. And I'm done. When we have the love of God and it is present in the life of a believer, it will be visible in five different areas. Love for the Savior. Lord have mercy. Jesus said, John said in 14 verse 15, if you love me, Keep my commandments. Revelation 2 and 4 says, you have left your first love. What's your first love? Christ. Are y'all with me? You got to have love for the Savior. You got to have love for the scriptures. John 5, 39. I'm reading from the Message Bible. says, you have your heads in your Bibles constantly because you think you'll find eternal life there, but you miss the forest for the trees. These scriptures are all about me. That's what he said. John chapter 5, verse 39. That's the message Bible. So that's love for the Savior, love for the scriptures, love for the sanctuary. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as ye see the day approaching. David said in Psalm 122 and 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Psalm 122 and 1. Love for the Savior, love for the scriptures, love for the sanctuary, love for the saints. And this is tough, but we need to listen to this. 1 John 4, 20. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, 21. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Let me, now, I got to say that slow. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen... How can he love God whom he hath not seen? This commandment have we from him that he that he would he who loveth God love his brother also. Got to have love for the saints. First John five, verse one through three. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is a Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. Glory to God. But this, we know that we love the children of God. 
when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. And here's, here's my, one of my favorite scriptures. John chapter 13 verse 35. He says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. Amen. When the saints walk in love, then God will be seen. So the last one, the last one, we have love for the Savior, love for the scriptures, love for the sanctuary, love for the saints. What do you think is next? Love for the sinners. Remember I said one Sunday, this place here is a hospital. This is for sick folks. This is not a place where Christians uh, immortalize each other and everyone else has to stay out. This is a place for sick folk. And every time we come in there, we try to ask the Lord to heal us from something. Amen. Amen. So we got to have love for the sinners. Jesus had a heart for sinners. Amen. He got criticized for always hanging around folk that wouldn't like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. God's love is more than just being loved. It is opening our lives so that the Lord can love through us. So that he can reach a world for himself. Again, as I stated on, to you on last week. Some people will never pick this up, but they will read you. He go to church every week, she go to church every week. Soon as something happens in their life, they fall apart. And you talking about the God that you serve in him? That's why we have to have the faith to believe that whatever we go through in life, God is able to keep us sustain us, and bring us through. Not at our, in our pace, not the way we think about to come. What the old folks say, it may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. We ought to praise the Lord for his overwhelming love, brothers and sisters. We can shout, we can lift our hands, we can run, we can dance, speaking tongues, but the best means we have of thanking him for his love is by letting him love through our lives and reach others for him. Amen. Amen. Let his love, he said, you are the salt of the world. You are the light of the world. Okay? So our Love ought to be, his love in us ought to shine through us that people can see Christ in us. And I don't know about you, but I am praying that each and every one of you would join me and ask the Lord to help us to love like he wants us to. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for loving me. I don't deserve it. Let's show the love for God by doing his will and being what he would have us to be and by loving like he would have us love. Think at one point of our lives, we were unlovable. But God still loved us. He loved us enough to save us and take us from where we were. Because all of us are X something. Amen. Every last one of us are X something. We don't have to, we don't have to do open mic and tell it what we X of. I know because the Bible says we're X something. We can share our testimony and let others know 
that if God can do it for me, he can do it for you. Okay? Jesus said in Matthew 22, verse 37 through 40, and I'm done. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. What is that? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do you know what kind of world we would have if, if everybody would use that golden rule? Do unto others as you would have them do. We don't need to Fred Sanford rule. Do unto others like they do it to you. We need to have the Lord's rule is love thy neighbor as thyself. Then he says in verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen? Amen. Were you blessed by the lesson on tonight? I'm done. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out and uh, I pray that you were blessed by you received something from this little lesson on tonight. That'll help you get your facts. Y'all remember what the facts are? Mm-hmm. Y'all ready to go back to your notes right quick. I see you. I see you already moving, trying to get there. Some of you took your glasses off. You put them back on right quick. Faithful to God. Available for God. Consistent in the ministry of God. Teachable from the word of God. And submissive. There it is right there. Look at that. He helping y'all. Those are facts. All right? Let me encourage you to continue in God's love. And let it be seen in your walk as well as your talk. In order for you to do that, you have to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I say this all the time because I know not everyone that comes to church is saved. And just because you come to church don't mean you're saved. So if you don't have a relationship, that's those who are listening online as well. Tonight is a good night to develop a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. All that's going on in this world, I'd rather have Jesus and don't need him than to need him and don't have him. I love each and every one of you. And let's spread God's love everywhere we go. Amen. Amen. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. Phenomenal and fantastic week. And then here's my saying. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Because he's going to mess with you even when you get ready to get out here tonight. I promise you. Somebody's going to pull out in front of you. And you're going to say, thank you, Jesus. No, you're not. No, you're not. Amen. All right. I am done. Um, I would like to announce that tomorrow seniors will be meeting at 10 there in the fellowship hall. Amen. I will encourage each and every last one of you to please remain safe. Okay. Vaccine or not, vaccinated or not, please remain safe. Delta variant is real. It's not time for, you know, I used to hear people say it and we, we going home. Uh, it's, it's not time for playing church. I ain't never known it to be time to play church. <laughs> Except when we were kids in the backyard, we were imitating some of them sisters that used to shout and sing and them deacons that prayed them same prayers every week. We imitated, that was playing church, but I'm talking about in here, there's never been a time to play church. And there definitely is not a time now. With all that's going on in our world, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling just like uh, 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 Miss Suge on Le, uh, Color Purple. Yeah, I'm always thinking of some kind of movie. Maybe God is trying to tell us something with this Delta variant. Just maybe God is trying to tell us something. All right, all minds are clear. Let's stand, please. Thank you so much for being here. I gave you 45 solid minutes of the word of God.
<clears throat> Glad to have my wife here tonight with us. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we just thank you for your word. We just thank you so much for your word that reveals what we need to do as believers, children of God. And I pray to God that we will demonstrate your love in every aspect of what you said on tonight to this world. To let them know that regardless of what's going on in the world, it does not Bother does not mess with our faith. We still believe that you can do all things. We believe that you can keep us. We believe that God, that if we keep our trust in you and we never doubt, we are going to come out of this pandemic better than we did before the pandemic. God, God I pray that you would bless each family that's represented here tonight with a blessing you see they stand in need of. We want to lift every student, every teacher, the superintendent, custodians, bus drivers, aides, cafeteria workers, everyone that is going to come in contact with those going back and forth to school, cover them by your blood, God. Some have started today. Some will start tomorrow. Some start next week. But God, you said in your word, by your stripes we're healed. And I'm praying to God for the covering of your blood over each and every one. That as they go in, mask or unmask. Because we, there's confusion even in that whether we should mask or unmask. God, I pray that you would allow the parents to make the right decision as it relates to the children that they won't wind up in the hospital. Teachers won't wind up in the hospital. Our medical system is being overwhelmed in ICU with, with this COVID, dear God. But God, you're trying to say something to it. I pray to God that we will hear what you're trying to say to us. And we will become better men, women, boys, and girls for you. We need you, God. We cannot make it without you. This world is in terrible shape. God, we need you to allow the Christians to stand, make a statement, and let the world know. Try Jesus. He's all right. God, I pray you bless one way you bless the entire Williamson, Travis County, bless this nation, Texas. We need you. We cannot make it without you. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Bless our sick and shut in. Thank you for my wife being here. Continue to bless her. Continue to strengthen her. Bless Pastor Emeritus and his family. Bless my mother, dear God. Continue to cover her by your blood. Bless our seniors. And God, as we leave this place, let us go to our homes safely. Let us get there safely, dear God, and let everything be in order just as we left it. And let us come back Sunday ready to give you praise and glory for your goodness and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. All the people of God said amen, 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 and amen. Now find somebody, look at them, and tell them, I love you. <laughs>